At this point, we're ready to calculate enthalpy in our series of numerical calculations for psychrometrics. And so let me begin by reminding you what enthalpy is. It's usually um, given by the letter H. And when we use lowercase letters, we're usually talking about intensive properties. And we use capital letters when we're talking about extensive properties, where an extensive property is not normalized per unit mass or per unit something. So if you remember what enthalpy is, it's internal energy plus the pressure times the volume term. And what we really want in this case is the intensive property of enthalpy with regards to the dry air. So let me just quickly derive what this formula is equal to. Because we're dealing with an ideal gas of two substances, we usually break it up into vapor and dry air. We can take this total enthalpy and it's going to simply be the sum of the dry air component and of the vapor component, H2O. And if we know that we can normalize, if we take a big H and we divide it by the mass of that component, we get a little h. We can take these two components and we'll have the mass of the dry air times the enthalpy of the dry air plus the mass of the vapor times the enthalpy of the vapor. That is still equivalent to this. And it's actually still equivalent to the total extensive enthalpy. Now again, we wanted enthalpy with regards to the dry air component. Total enthalpy with regards to uh, normalizing it by dry air. So if we take both sides of this equation, we divide by the mass of dry air. So we take this term, we divide by dry air. If you take this and divide by dry air, this goes to 1. If you take this, you get this term. And what you should notice now is that this term is equivalent to omega, the specific humidity ratio. So let's write this in total. We have the total enthalpy, and we're going to leave off a scrub subscript, but this is total intensive enthalpy with regards to per pound, per, per kilogram of dry air. That's equal to the enthalpy of the dry air plus the specific humidity ratio times the enthalpy at vapor. And we could do one more thing. We can say for our conditions at low pressures and temperatures, that this enthalpy of the vapor is actually equal to the enthalpy at saturation at a given temperature. And because we're dealing with ideal gas relations, so we're assuming everything's ideal gas, everything is just going to be a function of temperature alone. So at this point now we can actually just, we have numerical relationships for this term and this term, and it becomes fairly straightforward to compute. The enthalpy of dry air, we know if we are dealing with things that are, in, in an air conditioning, we're typically negative 10 degrees C through 50 degrees C. And within this range, uh, we can say that usually we're interested in delta enthalpies. We're not usually interested in the absolute, there is no absolute enthalpy. It's a, it needs a reference temperature but we, you usually take this specific heat at a constant pressure and have a delta T here. And what we can do is we'll say, we're going to arbitrarily say zero degrees C is our reference temp, an important point to make. And we're talking zero degrees C, not Kelvin here. So if we take zero degrees C as a reference temp, we can we can make this kind of hand wavy statement that the enthalpy at any given temperature is just this relation. And in this range, the CP for dry air is very, very close to 1.005 kilojoules per kilogram degree C. And so now we basically have this relation I'm going to put the units in times C. 
and this is in degrees C. So we have that part. And all we need now is this H at saturation with temperature, which, or H at vapor to be more precise. Now we took zero degrees C as our reference temperature and the enthalpy of vapor at, or this is water vapor at zero degrees C. That is around 2,500 kilojoules per kilogram degree C. You can put a 0.9 here if you'd like, or 2,501, I've also seen this. And the CP of the vapor in this temperature range, this negative 10 to negative, negative 10 to 50 degrees C, that is about 1.82 kilojoules per kilogram degree C. And so what we can do now is combine these two because this is a, a, a base enthalpy and then when enthalpy goes away from this zero degree C we have to go up by linear multiples of this 1.82. So let's take all this information and let's get a final total relationship for enthalpy. And if we do that, and this is in SI units, enthalpy is equivalent to 1.005, I'm going to leave the units off for now, plus 2,500.9, and actually don't let me forget there's an omega term here, plus 1.82 times t. And again, this here, this term, this was the enthalpy of the vapor, and this term was the enthalpy of the dry air. And here's our specific humidity ratio. And so this is fairly straightforward. And this is for degrees C. And there's a relation if you were in inch pound units. This is SI. And in IP, we have enthalpy is 0.24 times temperature plus specific humidity ratio times 1061 plus 0 0.44 times temperature. These temperatures are in degrees Fahrenheit. These terms here would be in BTU per pound mass degrees F. And obviously that leaves this enthalpy in units of BTU per pound mass. And that's it. So it's very straightforward to calculate enthalpy. Um, it's a, simply a function of temperature because of our initial ideal gas assumption. And in the next video, we'll be covering the final step, calculating the dew point temperature. See you soon.